how to form a bias when day trading is reliant on the following three factors you see on the chart now, which is market structure, statistics and hit rate levels, you know, which can be reset, trading your Nexo based and also overall context. Then combining all those factors into one to help you form a bias and also a developing bias as we go throughout the day and also heading into the next day potentially as well or week. Also some advanced tips in relation to this will be shared as well, how to combine them or other things to be looking at as well. So let's just get into it. So to begin with market structure, this is used mainly for myself on the four hour medium time frame. I want to be aware of how we are trending in that sense and also the 15 minute for more my intraday directions. Again, these are just my preferred ones. Again, you can be using, for example, the hourly, the 30 minute, the daily, the weekly, depending on the different time frame trader you are. For myself, for my more medium time frame outlook, again, the four hours preferred. And for more my more intraday outlook, when I wake up in the morning, I'm kind of fixated on the 15 minute or the five minute to be fair, kind of between those two. So let's go over to trading view now and break that down for you there. So I did also forget to mention the actual state that you can be in. So obviously you're gonna have the four hour and the 15 minute, but within that, you can kind of have different variants, meaning you can be uptrending within the four hour, downtrending within the 15 minute. You can also be range bound. So it's not, it doesn't always have to be uptrending or downtrending because there's going to be certain scenarios where you're going to be just purely range bound between stuck between two variables. And you know, the four hour might be uh, range bound or the 15 minute might be in an uptrend and vice versa. So kind of been looking at it in that perspective as well, but I'm going to show you some examples to hopefully help out with that. So for me, this is current brief example here. The four hour is currently just uptrending. You want to be like looking for swing lows on the chart. Okay. And also swing highs where are they break and taken out. I mean, here, for example, why this is a higher low than this high low here however you got to be thinking why are we looking at this low here in particular well because in my opinion i'm thinking to myself this here is not a significant market structure so change thus i'm viewing it as kind of this is your impulse move up again another move back down another higher high i made here because this is not a higher high based upon the wick above this high this is just a potential liquidity grab but then that just forms a high low and moves up from there this is an in internal movement Okay, for another high high. And again, you had to break this swing low here for then the trucks to be down, basically downtrending. But it didn't do that. So essentially, we're looking for higher prices. And you can classify that four hour time frame to be either uptrending or even range bound between these values here. Because you've since this point here in the chart from the 17th of March, you've been going relatively sideways. But I'm leaning much more towards the, the bias of it being uptrending, especially if you're looking at it from the whole year's perspective as well on the higher time frame daily, weekly. This is an uptrending market locally, at least at least on the four hour. I don't want to go into the market structure too much, but essentially you want to be identifying, you know, the structure in terms of the uptrend, downtrend. So we discussed the four hour. Now the 15 minute in this sense is actually range bound. You can see here, this, rather than this being in a certain specific trending direction, you, you can see actually the trend, the market structure is fairly just range bound, you know, from side to side. We've been stuck within a range for, I don't know, the best part of a few days now. So this isn't certainly trending in a certain direction. Maybe beforehand it was uptrending, but fairly locally, it remains range bound. And that's what you want to be interested in. For more, the more intraday stuff, what are you doing locally within the last day, two days, a few hours? It's kind of the time frame you're going to be looking at. Okay, so that's why I'm saying this is a range bound market on the 15 minute, on the up, or on the four hours, an uptrending market, just on a local perspective here. And this all will tie in much well uh, when we're discussing the stats, the statistics, bringing this in together, how we can use that to our advantage. And I'll be showing some of my stats as well there. So kind of leading on to this stats based thing, this is probably the most important for me in terms of my forming my bias throughout the day, uh, as well as obviously the market. But this for me, there's a lot of things here that I don't talk about too much, which I'll share some of the things with you today. High hit rate levels, which reset potentially. And these can be exo charts and trading view based levels. I'm going to dive exactly into what these stats are in a minute. Okay, but just so you can know like the type of stuff you're going to be doing building stats outside, you know, using Excel, Google Sheets, whatever it may be to build these stats. And I'm going to show you how, you know, they formulate on the chart, how you can be using this to your bias and whatnot throughout the day as well. So let's go over to trading view and I'll show you this in more detail because this is going to be a bit of a larger segment of the video. So first of all, over to trading view to understand like these higher hit rate levels, what they are exactly. And what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, price is stagnant here, for example, and then you know there's a level on the chart for example let's just say for in this case these highs that you know this specific high because of its certain characteristics or whatnot has a chance of 85 percent to be hit within a certain time period well i would be saying it doesn't make sense to be looking for shorts directly just yet it would be make sense to look for higher price and thus that's helping you form a bias this is a very brief example of what the high you know these hit rate levels can do um, but just as a brief example, in that case, how you can be using it like that in terms of looking for higher prices, looking for lower prices. But I'm going to dive now into exactly showing you what those stats you just saw previously were and how I use that to my advantage still to this day on an intraday basis and how you can too. So to do that, we have to head over to, to Exo Charts actually or any order flow software with TPO market profile stuff going on within it. Um, and what you want to be understanding within this so far is actually going to be the poor highs and poor lows. So without diving into this too much, um, you want to be looking at a TPO chart 
literally every bottom or top of a TPO chart is going to have blocks on it. And essentially the the high end, bottom end of these profiles, right? If they've got two blocks or more on them, that is defined as a poor high and poor low. So you need to remember that when looking at these stats I'm about to go into into more detail, but a poor high and poor low are blocks on the TPO chart where on either end of the TPO profile, you've got more than one block on the TPO, meaning this, for example, here on this profile is a poor low. This is not, you can see you've got one up there. This is not a poor high, but this is a poor low. This is not a poor high. This is not a poor low. You know, you can see when you've got more than one block, this is not, uh, this is not, there's a few scenarios where you come close, but this is a poor low, okay? More than one block on the bottom end of the TPO profile after the day has completely finished or even within a developing day, if the bottom end of the profile is still two blocks or the top end is two blocks, poor high, poor low. So just understand that before we go into these stats now. So these are some stats, going back to the stats now, here, here we can understand a bit more. So a high, that high is referring to a poor high, right? And the percentage chance is, the, the percentage essentially that that high is then tested within one day, within two day, within three days, and then longer than three days. So this 25% is really important because what this tells us is within the course of these 225 days, that within 70, because you know 25% remove that from 175% chance. So what it's saying is, is that there's a 75% chance that within, you know, that when a poor high is left on the profile, that is then there's a 75% chance that within three days of then after it, it's actually a you know 75% chance it gets tested. Now that is a stat you can use to your advantage. Okay, you know 55% within one day, 14% within those you know 69% uh, within two days, uh, which is actually quite interest, quite high to be honest. And then 75 within three. You know if you add them all up, so you can see here, and this is for the low, which is a bit lower, which is 60% chance over the course of three days. But you can see 42%, 12, and six. You know if you add them up respectively, it comes up to that 60% mark. So now I'm going to be diving into an actual real life use case of these scenarios of these poor highs, poor lows, and also diving into another stat that I've kind of come about as well that I can be giving to you kind of just to work around, work with. Again, these aren't all my stats and also to recognize that anything above 50% can be classified as an edge. Preferably you want it to be much higher than that or higher than that, you know, 55, 60 plus over a long period of time will give you a sufficient edge over the market if you know, can use that to your advantage. So just keep that in mind. Now on the chart now, we've actually got Paul, so I've marked out this poor low. I remember this was like a few days ago. Price was trending upwards. So again, using the market structure kind of in tangent with this now, price is trending towards the upside. And I've seen throughout the TPO profile that at the time it had left a poor low on the TPO chart, you know, on that developing day. It left a poor low here, but price is trending up. Now, the poor low also instantly makes me think, well, you know, within three days, there's a likelihood, there's a 60% chance that we do test. It's again, over a long period of time, I've got to be thinking that that data is useful. Similar to back down towards here, you know, we had that poor low that I was showing you as the example as for the poor low, that this would be tested within three days as well. And this is on the Tuesday, so it's formed. So you'd be expecting, you know, the 60% chance is tested between uh, that until Friday, basically. So just keep that in mind. Price is trending upwards, right? Price is trending upwards. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm curious. I'm thinking, I'm very cautious with it. So I'm always place emphasis on market structure, but I'm also very kind of adamant in the perspective of, I'm gonna be focused on market structure, but if there's a level below, I'm gonna remain cautious on following that market structure too much. If we see any sort of weakness in that market structure, things can accelerate very quickly to the downside. And I know I'm showing you an ideal example, but trust me, I've got many other stats and this is just like a very common occurrence where I'll show you a bit of an example now, actually a bit of a diagram. So let's draw it out now. You've got a high hit rate level here, for example. Okay, it forms throughout the day, it's coming here. And I'm just gonna draw prices trending upwards, but you know there's a, there's a decent chance actually price revisits this level throughout a period of time. Okay, this is the way I'd look at it. Price is trending. Okay, and actually what happens is price you know, makes this high high and then it breaks structure. So it, it clears up this low here, breaks structure. Now, let's say you're looking for a short trade, great. But also to increase your risk to reward, you know, this is something I, I mentioned because of that final world kind of perspective, rather than like people would be like targeting this next swing low, this next swing low, no, I'm much more kind of conservative on my taking profit until actually this level is hit because I've got that stat behind it being hit. There's no actual major point until actually it's worth like waiting for this level to be hit rather than just, you know, kind of looking at in more internal levels, wait for that that higher hit rate level to be hit because you've got the stats when you've got the edge. Over over time, over a long period of time, that is part of your edge. That's part of my edge. You know, I haven't shown all the levels of, of interest that I kind of, my stats and everything I go through, but this is kind of the work down for you to do is to find these levels of extremely high hit rates or high-ish hit rates that you can be using to your edge 
for directional bias throughout the course of a day. You know, these poor highs, poor lows form on a daily basis. You know, do the same with the weekly. Maybe the monthly is different. I don't know. I haven't tested the weekly or monthly, but the daily is where I've got my edge. I don't mind sharing that with you. And there's another thing as well that I'll show you now, another stat. Um, but this is like the poor highs, poor lows, using this to your advantage as well. Okay, so there's another thing I'll show you now, which is actually towards and in relation towards actually New York Opens. So New York Opens, I'm using this free indicator I've called Open Lines by Nephew Sam. Again, I've got different New York Open times. So before you get rambling in the comments or whatever, I use different New York Open times. GMT plus one, put on 12 here, okay? That is it, you know, put your obviously your offset in here and then just put 12. And, and this is what it is. It will basically show you New York Open, They're essentially the line for New York Open, right? And this is the best case because these New York Open line is always tested. It never goes completely untested. So what I mean by that is, price opens here for example the open candles here the open line and then it gets tested throughout that period of the session now that's interesting right it's kind of relatively straightforward you know open line drop straight away but then tested again so while you know using that as for some form of directional bias but if you look here how often you know i won't give you the stat yet or anything but how often is this level never tested so if we extend line max line to show let's just change it to 50 okay how this line is always tested throughout the course of that day you know like it's even here, look at this. So even if price ended up uptrending overall, you know, look, it opened here, move up, test the level before moving towards the upside, okay? Now, why I'm saying this, because in the same day that we had those poor lows kind of lining up below price action, even though we're uptrending, you had this New York open where <laughs> price was essentially open, moved straight away. And I'm thinking this, you know, this actually is one of the stats which is really, really useful because I know this is actually a much higher hit rate than all the others, you know, especially for when it's like naked like this. I'm thinking this level is going to get tested. You know, it's going to get tested. There's a strong possibility it does. Any sort of breakdown, you'd be looking to target this at the minimum, then targeting actually the poor lows on the TPO chart for those type of levels. So using this for your advantage in that case, again, you can use this. So, you know, you've got the TPO, poor highs, poor lows in that fashion. Mark those out daily, put it onto your routine checklist, check them out consistently. And then also this New York open line. So looking at... Uh, essentially just 12 o'clock UTC, um, you know, which is one o'clock for me, and then basing it from there, okay, this is really quite important for me, again, you can use with other open line methods, you know, London open, and again, I'm not using the traditional New York session open, so keep that in mind, we're looking at this, but I'm using this for directional bias, you know, so two things so far is those TPO and the New York open, so just keep that in mind. Now, just to discuss some overall context, overall context for me is the type of environment we're in, when I, what I mean by that is actually mainly in relation to open interest and CVD, where the majority of those positions is opening up. You know, open interest, how has that been over the course of our range? You know, we've identified, are we uptrending? Are we downtrending? Are we range bound? What's the open interest CVD within that certain period? If we're uptrending, what's the open interest within that uptrend? If we're downtrending, what's the open interest there? What's the CVD within that? You know, if we're range bound, how is the CVD? What are the majority of those positions doing? So just as a brief example here, Bitcoin is range bound. We can say over the last two days, really from the weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Let's merge back. So again, if you want EXO stuff, I'll go over this in more detail on my Twitter if you want to check that out. But merge X, you know, just hit the merge X three. Um, and now we've merged back three days worth of data. Whoops, I think that's too too many. All right, merge, and then merge again one more. Chumo batch two. Okay, so we've merged back two. You've got this kind of range going on here, but you can also take the dynamic profile tool, if I just maximize this now, dynamic profile tool, uh, and actually take a pull here. Okay, and I can actually see what's going on directly within this range. So this dynamic profile tool essentially shows you at the bottom of the profile here, CVD negative 13, open interest plus positive. So this is mainly short closing out within this range. You can just see very quickly through the kind of developing process here. What's CVD doing? What's open interest doing on average throughout a certain period of time? Also within this, you can actually set, select the CPL. So I'm going into a bit more advanced details now. Um, you can ex uh, basically select a cluster type, long exit versus new short versus, you know, all of this stuff. Short versus long new is really interesting. It just shows you new positions. Where are those new positions opening up within this range? This is probably better for when you're uptrending or downtrending. So you can use that for SR levels. But the idea is to get, a, get an, an idea of what overall context of the market is doing, you know, throughout this period of time, you know, whether you're uptrending or downtrending, it's really important. Not only to be looking at open interest and CVD, by the way, within this, but also to be looking at liquidity within the market. So I've got this little tool here that I use. Uh, we just go bring it here liquidity okay and it's going to show you essentially where you know where's liquid resting liquidity in the market and i'm using this to my edge as well to kind of formulate a bias 
what, you know, if I see there's good resting liquidity above us, for example, like here, you know, we've got series of highs, series of stops waiting to be tested. That plays into my bias to be thinking the price is heading higher. But also you can see it's, it's, in this case, it's actually equivalent because you've got resting liquidity to the downside as well. I'm going to cover this in a separate video, but the overall context is mainly thinking about CVD OI within that type of market structure period you've been, you know, uptrending, downtrending, range bound within the 15 minute, four hour. Um, and also talking about the, you know, the stats and all of that stuff, you know, that I went over, that's really important. Using the market structure and the stats, the little diagram I went over, I think that's the most important thing to be remembering when just looking at kind of forming a day-to-day -day bias and kind of even like the days going forward bias or the week going forward bias. There's so many different things that I've, I've, I'm yet to discuss here, but I hope you enjoy. Check out my Twitter at Luxury with an extra while on the end for intraday updates on exo charts, all of this stuff as well. Templates all for free. So thank you, everyone.